is the Sahara, one of the driest places on Earth. Derived from the Arabic word for desert, the Sahara is where time and all forms of life seem to have stopped. It receives no more than about 200 millimeters of rain per year, which is barely enough to fill a small milk carton. Yet, the same desert is home to shrimp. It has taken an entire decade to raise sea shrimp in the desert. Despite raging sandstorms and the scorching sun, healthy shrimp are being harvested even today. This is a story made possible by a group of miracle workers in the desert. It's a special story in which two countries, once distant and complete strangers, are brought together through a mutual exchange of hope. <laughs> Located in Northeast Africa, Algeria is 10 times larger than the Korean Peninsula. 87% of it, however, consists of barren deserts. The vast Sahara that covers the south is populated only by a handful of nomads. Over 90% of the population lives along the country's northern coast. Despite its extensive coastal region that stretches for 1,200 kilometers, Algeria's fishing industry has not enjoyed much growth. It depends heavily on imports for most seafood products, and those that are distributed in some port cities are not that diverse. Understandably, seafood is an expensive delicacy in Algeria. Maintenant, en termes de prix, je dirais que les prix sont ce qu'ils sont. C'est toute une chaîne, donc, mais je pense que la, la, la demande est supérieure à l'offre. Donc les prix sont relativement chers, je dirais, hein? voilà, Et... mais le poisson est très élevé. How much do shrimp cost then? One kilogram of shrimp sells for 3,000 dinars, which is about $30. It's a hefty price, considering that a kilogram of beef costs $15, and a whole pizza costs three to four dollars. The May Market is one of the largest market in Algiers, the capital city. The situation is similar here.
Recently, though, some hopeful news has been spreading through the region. It's about fish farming, which has been considered impossible before. Oui, j'en ai entendu parler. En ce moment, on parle que ça sur les médias. C'est quelque chose de nouveau aussi en Algérie. Je pense qu'elle sera très intéressante parce que il y a énormément de demandes donc le bâtisseur en Algérie et que la demande n'est pas suffisante sur la pêche ici en Algérie. Donc, je pense bien que la culture va régler beaucoup de problèmes. Normalement, ça va, ça va être quelque chose de bien. The source of this hope lies in the middle of the Sahara. Ouargla, a desert city that sits 800 kilometers away from Algiers. The large outdoor farm makes it hard to believe that it is located in the desert. This is the birthplace of the Sahara Project. The Sahara Project is one of the ODA initiatives by Korea and Algeria, with the goal of improving Algeria's inadequate fishery resources. Launched in 2007, this joint initiative led to the establishment of the Shrimp Cultivation Research Center here four years ago, heralding the official start of its activities. The center is the size of 12 soccer fields combined together. It took them 10 years to build a farm in the desert, raise shrimp, and reap their first harvest. They expect to produce as much as 100 tons annually in the future. The passion of Korean researchers has completely altered the desert. For the, our uh, team, Algerian team, they are able and ready to do anything. And for Algerian, uh, the Korean team, they are planifying and make all plan to the, all plan to success uh, this uh, project. And we cooperate together, and we get the results. You, you see before we have uh, shrimp in deserts. Among them is Dr. Chang ying Guan, who has been listed in Marquis Who's Who, one of the world's three biographical dictionaries, for his environmentally friendly okay. shrimp farming That's techniques. That's well. yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. He first came to Algeria in 2008, when he was working at the National Institute of Fisheries Science. C4. Since then, he has been leading the ODA efforts related to fish farming and making ceaseless efforts to transfer relevant technologies. It has been 10 long years since the first preliminary surveys. In a sense, the history of shrimp farming in Algeria represents his time in the country. Nobody said it would be easy 
but the reality was even more challenging than expected. The sweltering heat that reached 60 degrees Celsius, dry land, unfamiliar language and culture. It's a small wonder that there are many concerns about the success of the Sahara project. The researchers, however, were confident. There was a success story that they could refer to. Kikta is a coastal city that sits in northern Algeria. This is where Cave Fish, the original ODA project in Algeria, was first launched. Prior to the transfer of Korea's technologies, Algeria had one of the weakest aquaculture industries in the region. Most of their seafood was provided irregularly by small fishing boats. The first species to be cultivated in a proper facility was shrimp. This Korea-Algeria shrimp farm was where the new changes began to manifest themselves. Skikta's proximity to the ocean meant that the seawater needed in shrimp farming could be easily procured. The first goal of the joint initiative was to produce seed, which would be mandatory to mass produce shrimp and ensure a stable supply. However, when they first commissioned Korea with a job, the Algerian authorities did not have high hopes. Since their joint projects with other countries had failed. Meanwhile, it wasn't easy for the Korean researchers to carry out the project while adjusting themselves to the Islamic culture. Uh, Nevertheless, through meticulous localization efforts, they were able to overcome the obstacles one by one and moved forward. They decided to breed Karuma prawns which were most suitable for the Algerian climate and succeeded in seed production in three years. In 2011, the first year of the project, they produced approximately 6 million seed and 2,000 kilograms of shrimp. Even today, Skikta continues to raise young shrimp into sizable adults. Because shrimp are globally considered a value-added product, Algeria could potentially export shrimp to its neighboring European countries.
In addition, the seed production business that started out with Karuma prawns has been expanded to caramel prawns and white leg shrimp from the Mediterranean, promising a bright future. What's also meaningful is that through this joint endeavor, Korea's advanced farming technologies have been transferred to Algerian specialists. Uh, still the life. It's very strong. You almost became the expert here now. Huh? No? No? بالنسبة إلينا يعني فخر كبير أن نتعامل مع إنسان مثله بالنسبة للشرح أو بالنسبة لتقديم الدروس أو آلية عمل آلية آلية التكاثر وشرح وتقديم الدروس على مستوى راقي جدا. There's more. The 10 years of working together has cultivated a friendship between the Korean and Algerian researchers. That means much more than just sharing technologies. What do you think about Dr. Jean? Who is Dr. Jean? My father? <laughs> my son, Ishala. Oh, my father, how are you? <laughs> Where's my mother? <laughs> In other words, they are writing the story of success as partners. Dr. Jean is a famous Korean man and introduced this biofloc technology and this shrimp uh, technology in uh, Algeria. I'm very happy to, this, uh, to uh, participate with this uh, technology or this uh, farming, shrimp farming in uh, Algeria. Why is Algeria placing such importance on shrimp farming? It's because it means much more than just a successful introduction of an aquaculture technology. Africa's fish consumption per capita is one of the lowest in the world. The same goes to other types of seafood. Seafood is a relatively cheap source of protein and essential amino acids. Unfortunately, there are many people in Africa who live right next to the sea and yet suffer from various diseases because they are not getting enough fish. The advances made in farming technologies offer a valuable opportunity to fight poverty and disease. Uh, in Algeria, you have to know that 95% of the production comes from fish and uh, 5% comes from aquaculture uh, today. Et il y a un déficit de l'offre de poissons sur le marché national. Nous sommes vraiment à des niveaux de consommation très bas. The Joint ODA initiative by COICA and the National Institute of Fisheries Science that aims to transfer aquaculture technologies to Algeria naturally holds a special meaning. So Mr. Yuan sent me the, the photos. Uh, yeah. By capitalizing on its expertise, Korea is contributing to create a global community in which all countries prosper. Yeah, 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 그 수산물 공급이 수입에 많이 의존을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 우리나라가 가지고 있는 선진적인 이런 양식 기술을 전수함으로써 국민들에게 수산 먹거리를 대량으로 안정적인 가격에 공급할 수 있다는 데큰 의의가 있습니다. 그리고 또 다른 의미에서 이제 수산업이란 새로운 산업이 발전하게 됨으로써 국민 어 고용 창출 그다음에 이런 경제적인 측면에서도 긍정적인 효과를 가져오게 되었습니다. Of course, 
Introducing shrimp farming in the middle of the Sahara was a huge challenge for the Korean researchers. Given the region's meager rainfall, some doubted whether they would succeed. However, it was difficult to ignore the dire needs of the locals. It was critical for Algeria to develop the barren lands and shift the population away from the crowded coastal region, while also supplying seafood to the inland area. Surprisingly, the solution to their predicament lay in the desert. The underground water flowing deep below the barren land contained some amount of salt. The researchers decided to start off by using this underground water. Unfortunately, an analysis of the water's components showed that its salinity level was too low. For Skikta's sea shrimp to live in, They needed a species that was different from the ones raised in Skipta, where seawater was always available. After much research, they found what they were looking for, the white leg shrimp. And so they overcame one obstacle, but another awaited them. Fish farming requires regular supply and change of water. However, the limited amount of underground water in the desert could not guarantee a steady supply. The researchers continued searching for a solution to this problem. And in the end, they successfully developed a new method. It's called the Bioflock Technique. Environmentally friendly, this method uses microorganisms to treat waste produce by shrimp and impurities in the water. Those same microorganisms are then fed to the shrimp. Through the application of the bioflock technique, the researchers were able to not only solve the problem of water shortage, but also drastically boost productivity by increasing the stocking density per unit area by 20 to 50 times. Yerujamion, and 
The development of basic technologies that are tailored to the desert helped the Sahara project gain momentum. Also related to Horizon 2025, Algeria's long-term policy for the growth of the fishing industry and fishing farming. The project garnered much interest as one of the country's growth engines. From Algeria's perspective, the project was an ambitious endeavor to alleviate the shortage of seafood through aquaculture, as well as to boost income and create more jobs, with hopes that it would ultimately elevate its national status. And at long last, shrimp farming became a reality in the Sahara an unprecedented feat in the world. With mass production also kicking in from last year, the Sahara project has become a great miracle that has wowed the global community. That's why they don't listen to me. Commercialization, commercialization. I think they are in the situation. In fact, it is a very strange thing with the beginning, with the belief that in the Sahara everything is available for the development of the animals. And in the beginning, it was a dream, and now it is a reality. What's important is that the development of these eco-friendly and sustainable fish farming techniques isn't just for developing countries. According to the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization, among the 70 major fisheries in the world, four have been completely depleted while nine show drastic drop in fish stock. In particular, 70% of fish species that hold commercial importance have suffered severe population loss due to overfishing. <laughs> Meanwhile, consumption of seafood is showing an upward trend, with the supply continuously lagging behind the increasing demand global prices of seafood are expected to keep rising. Some estimate by 2050, mankind will need to consume at least 70% more protein than we are consuming at present. Aquaculture is no longer just a matter of choice. It's a prerequisite to survival. Yang Sikhsanovun, Sege Jomyongan Mire Hakjana, Gengjakjadri, Jomuye Chakago Itashi, Apuru Mire Ilue Shingyang or Hegeral Shinan, Yuiran Pangan Roso, Ku Jungyosing, Chigum Aju Kangjoga Dego Simda. Apuru E. Jungyan Yang Sikhsanabur, Mire Sanaburo, Ikuru Kagi Vesanun. 어, 지금부터라도 빨리 어, 현재의 기술을 표준화하고 어, 첨단화하고 어, 자동화 또 스마트화해서 어, 미래의 젊은이들이 하고 싶어하는 희망적인 산업으로 만들어 나가야 된다고 생각합니다. This is an eel farm, located in Hampyeong, Jeollanamdo Province, Korea. The 
the workers are busy with the morning shipment. Today, a total of 6.5 tons of eels are being shipped. Each shipment varies from 4 tons to as much as 10 tons and is distributed nationwide. Eels are one of the most commonly farmed fish in Korea. According to a survey conducted in 2016, Domestic eel production amounted to a whopping 9,904 tons, while wild-caught eels accounted for only 0.5% of this figure. This means that most of the eels that reach our table are farm-raised. What's interesting is that the farm-raised are not as cheap as one might think. In fact, eels are still one of the more expensive fish. Why is that? The most important thing is the price of 치어가 뭐 우리가 100% 바다에서 이제 수확을 해오기 때문에 매년 이제 수급 상황이 일정치가 않아서 공급 가격이 너무 변동폭이 심해요. 그러니까 변동폭이 심한 만큼 우리도 운영하는데 음, 차질이 많이 생기죠. Eels normally spawn at a depth of about 300 meters under the sea. Six months after fertilization, larva undergo metamorphosis to become glass eels, which grow and live in rivers. The current eel farming method involves catching these glass eels and raising them in inland waters. In other words, the procurement of the young is completely dependent on nature. Because the supply is unstable, prices fluctuate severely. The implementation of various international regulations that aim to prevent overfishing also add to the uncertainties. What shed a ray of hope on this situation was the success that the National Institute of Fisheries Science had with full cycle eel farming last year. It's the second time this had been pulled off in history. Led by Dr. Kim Dae-jung, the research team at the Institute has been conducting studies to produce artificial eel seeds from 2008. In 2012, four years later, they were able to produce glass eels, thereby laying the groundwork for full-cycle eel farming. Then, another four years later, they succeeded in getting adult eels to lay eggs, showing that the team's attempt to realize full-cycle farming had been achieved. Japanese friends in 
어, 완전 양식 2세대 생, 생산하는 데 어, 성공을 했습니다. 약한 10년이 소요가 됐습니다. 그런데 저희들은 2012년도에 인공실뱀장에 성공을 했고 어, 작년도 2016년도에 약 4년 정도 걸쳐가지고 어, 인공실뱀장을 2세대 생산하는 데 성공을 했죠. However, the team is not done with its experiments. There is an obstacle that must be overcome in order to commercialize this technology. This is a leptocephalus, the larva of an eel. Its body is shaped like a willow leaf, and through metamorphosis, it grows into a glass eel, which is the starting point in the current eel farming practice. The problem is that the leptocephaly, which hold an important position in the life cycle of an eel, do not easily metamorphose in an artificial environment. This also means that their survival rate in an early stages is very low. To ensure a stable supply of eels and their mass production, more ecological studies and technologies are required. 지금 대량 생산 연구를 하기 위해 가지고 어 16년 그러니까 6월 달에 실뱀장어 대량 생산 연구단을 발족을 했습니다. 대량 생산은 세계 어느 나라도 지금 어 되지도 않기 때문에 그래서 저희들이 지금 어 대량 생산을 뭐 그런 측면에서라도 어 빠른 시간 내에 저희들이 대량 생산을 하기 위한 목적도 세계 최초로 할수 있는 어떤 그런 계기를 마련하고자 하는 생각도 가지고 있습니다. The fishing industry's transition from catching to raising can also be seen as an effort to secure our future food supply. And those efforts are also being made in the middle of the blue ocean. Sitting approximately two hours away from Yosu Port. In the waters near the Komundo Island is an experimental fish farm for bluefin tuna built by the National Institute of Fisheries Science. The bluefin tuna are moving about energetically. It's difficult to believe that they are being raised in underwater cages. Normally, bluefin tuna travel back and forth between temperate and tropical seas. Their main spawning ground stretches from southern Japan to the high seas of the Philippines. They can grow up to 3 meters in length and weigh 500 kilograms. About 60 bluefin tuna are currently being raised here. Because they are a large, migratory species, it is by no means easy to raise them through cage farming. What made them start tuna farming, despite the obvious challenges? It was none other than the high value attached to this rare fish. The demand for bluefin tuna is rising on a global scale, but they account for a meager 0.6% of the total tuna production. Because fishing regulations are also becoming more stringent to protect the species, the price of bluefin tuna continues to skyrocket.
To find a solution to the situation, the Bluefin Tuna Farming Initiatives was kicked off in 2010. And in just five years, they became the second in the world to reach the full cycle aquaculture stage. Aligned with the growth cycle of the fish, the farming technique involves acquiring wild-caught seed, raising farm-hatched fish into adults, and producing artificially fertilized eggs through them. Because the fishery is located right in the middle of the ocean, it wasn't easy to deal with the fickle ocean weather and water temperature. The fishery was damaged several times due to typhoons. Despite these hardships, the research team made full cycle farming possible five times quicker than other countries. Shipment of bluefin tuna raised in farms near Yokchido and Jeju-do Island has already begun as a pilot run. It is expected that mass shipment will soon become possible. 참다랑어를 어떻게 빨리 산업화시키는가 하는 부분에 저희들이 역점을 둬서 연구를 진행하고 있고요. 그런 측면에서 뭐 완전 양식도 중요하고 그다음 자연에서 작은 것들을 이용해서 그 빨리 산업화 가는 측면에서도 중요하기 때문에 그런 것들을 다 병행해서 연구하고 있는 그런 측면입니다. A stable supply of farm-raised bluefin tuna can replace an import worth about 70 billion won. Also taking into account the possibility of exports. Economic benefits are expected to be worth around 500 billion won. This is where COIGA and the National Institute of Fishery Science have been jointly offering training for strengthening the fundamentals of Algeria's fishing industry over the past three years. Korea's success with bluefin tuna farming is a source of great interest for the Algerian researchers who have come to the country to learn various techniques related to the fishing industry. One after another, the trainees ask questions throughout the lecture. Their trust in Korea, formed through the shrimp farming project in the Sahara, has fed their faith in its sea farming expertise as well. They are hoping for another miracle through more cooperation with Korea. It's been around a decade since Korea and Algeria formed ties through the Shrimp Aquaculture Project. This relationship now means much more than just an exchange of technologies, characterized by new social aspects.
in a residential area located on the outskirts of Algiers. We met an individual who has found memories of her exchange with Korea. She first made ties with Korea a few years ago as a trainee in one of the Koika's training programs. She greets her guests warmly, the Algerian way, as she would greet longtime friends. As a member of the first class of trainees, Ayat even had a chance to visit Korea herself. Though her stay was short, the things she saw in the country opened her eyes. What was once just a strange country in a land far, far away has become her close neighbor. It isn't just Ayad who sees Korea in a new light. The success of the shrimp farming project helped boost the country's standing within the Algerian community. With more people sharing, Ayat's experience. Algeria and Korea are becoming closer and closer as partners. Oui, il y a une grande différence entre notre pays, l'Algérie, et la Corée du Sud. Mais cela ne fait pas cesser obstacle entre les deux pays. Algérie, les gens et les communautés ont besoin de l'économie de l'économie de l'économie de l'économie. 항상 그 만날 때마다 한국 정부들의 그런 기술 이전과 그다음에 연수 훈련 교육을 시켜달라고 요청을 많이 받습니다. 그래서 한국과 알제리는 지금 현재 아프리카 내에서 알제리가 유일한 전략적 동반자 관계이고 이러한 내실 있는 전략적 동반자 관계를 발전시키기 위해서 양국 간에 서로 이익이 되는 많은 프로젝트를 추진해 나가고 있습니다. The sun rises once again in the desert. Winter has begun in Algeria, but young shrimp that have recently hatched are moving around actively in the indoor farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These cannot catch up. So small. Cannot, the shrimp will spend a lot of energy. One of the advantages of the Sahara project is that all year-round production is possible thanks to the BioFlock technology. There is something meaningful about this round of seed production. We have been prepared for the manual and we have been prepared for the manual. We have been prepared for the manual and we have been prepared for the manual. We have been prepared for the manual. 수확하는가 동시에 새로운 종묘를 넣어서 새로운 사이클을 시작할 수 있었다는 게 가장 큰 의의가 있습니다. 결국 이 알제리 사하라 사막 새우 프로젝트의 전체 큰 그림이 완성되었음을 보여줄 수 있는 그런 수확이었습니다. Encouraged by the success, enjoyed by the Shrimp Cultivation Research Center in Wargla. The Algerian government plans to build around 100 more farms in deserts, where underground water is available by 2025. What's more, the farming support project has evolved through the DEEP initiative, an acronym for Development Experience Exchange Partnership. It involves offering ongoing consulting services to the recipient country so that it can achieve sustainable development. 
Through DEEP, the two countries have a chance to go beyond technical exchanges and establish a long-term win-win partnership. La coopération euh, algéro-coréenne était très, très, très euh, bénéfique et euh, était très sincère par rapport à d'autres euh, coopérations, bien sûr. Les experts euh, coréens, ils, euh, ils ont fait beaucoup d'efforts euh, pour euh, réussir euh, le projet, pour... Euh, transférer la technologie et ont travaillé sincèrement. Ils ont donné beaucoup, ils ont donné tout et on est très, très satisfait par leur travail. Introducing shrimp farming in the barren Sahara Desert was a challenge and a miracle for both Korea and Algeria. What made such miracle possible was the determination to never lose sight of the greater cause. to ensure a future for all. The dream for a better future, envisioned on the hottest land by the most passionate people, is just the beginning. Cheers.